Going to watch Ali Antrazi, Max McVitie. Both these players 5-1 and one as we watch game number three between these two in round number seven. Take a look at the opening hand, see if they find something they like. It does not look like Antrazi is happy with what he sees, so he will take a mulligan. However, this does give us the opportunity to learn a little bit more about Ali Antrazi, a player that has had a lot of SEG Tour success. We saw him with the Players' Championship last year. He's created a team as well, and it's Team Boss for the 29-year-old from Matthews, North Carolina, with these 11 open top eights, two victories, two invitational top eights in that win last year, the self-proclaimed best mixtape creator, along with professional teddy bear namer, and the last United States national champion, the last U.S. Nationals was 2011. You know who else is a former U.S. national champion? Who's that? Coverage colleague Craig Kremples. That's very true. He did win. Uh, I think he won with uh, Skull Clamp. Right. The uh, the Elf deck. It was weird. It was it was a tournament. I, I forget exactly that the DCI policy was a little bit different back then. I believe Skull Clamp got banned on Sunday, <laughs> but because the tournament started on Friday, you could play with it. Nice. So then he you know just ran wild through the top eight. With Skull Clamp on various elves. Yep. Won nationals. Clearly Skull tended Skull Clamp's intended use. Yeah. Just sacrificing wood elves and Just everything. Putting it else. on elves. Yep. Clearly the plan with that card. And casting Vernal Bloom with no punishment whatsoever. I remember seeing that deck when I was young. I really liked that deck. Never really got to play it in anything, but I was a big fan. We're underway here in game number three. You'll see Max with a search for tomorrow. Two counters there for the suspend. Antrazi with an Urza's power plant. That looks like maybe an expedition map. My deck was terrible at the national championships. Okay. Though I almost was the draft master. Oh, you're almost six-o draft? Or seven-o'd back then because they made okay. you play four rounds in one of your pods or something. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. On day two, they made you do yeah. that. Yeah. I think I lost my last round of draft to not draft master. It's too bad. Still wouldn't have given me any money, so who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would have been, you know, would have been nice. Yeah. Stuff for you to hold on to like that. Ajani. <laughs> here's a, right. Here's a secure tri builder. Does Antrazi have land number two? It looks like he does in Sanctum of Ugin. This has all the makings of, of the type of game where Tron just gets blown out before anything really happens. Yeah. He can't respond this fast to the best draws. Looks like a Warping Whale is going to take care of Bang. Search tomorrow. So, McVitie is not going to get to go completely nuts. This deck does have a very, very good draw available to it. Yeah, and he actually has Through the Breach, and I think Primeval Titan already in hand. Far Seeking hand, too. Another Jeez. land. Jeez. A nice looking hand. Bloodstained Mire. That's the land here for Max. He'll search of a basic mountain. Will our Columbus Invitational champion? And is it time for a far seek? Nope, just an Oracle of Moldaya. Threw the breach on top of the deck. Valakut is the land to play. So you see the hand there through the breach and far seek. So this is part of the problem with this deck, right? Yep. Where he's got, you know, half the combo, if you will. Yep. Escape Shift is a one-card kill. Through the Breach is a two-card kill. Sometimes you're missing another piece, and Through the Breach doesn't do anything. Yeah. That's the cost. That's where McVitie's at right now. But with the, with the right help from Oracle of Moldiah, he doesn't even need Primeval Titan. He mm -hmm. can just win with Valakut plus all of his extra lands. Well, and Trossi sees a Through the Breach staring back at him, so he's probably a little bit wary. And again... In a matchup like this, you don't really have much of a choice. You just got to do your thing and hope they can't do theirs. Well, the, the flip side of this, this is the desperation play. If Ollie thinks he's likely to die, he could go get a ghost quarter, tag a land to make McVitie shuffle the deck. It, it's, so, this, it's so bad if it turns out McVitie doesn't have Primeval Titan. You're so far behind in so many different respects. But if you think you have a path to win the game and just need a little bit of time, it's a play you could rationalize. Yeah, Ghost Quarter just seems like such a temporary solution, and it's not even clear if it is a solution. Right, because if, you're, if Primeval Titan's already in hand, well, McVitie has five lands and Oracle will die in play. <laughs> yeah. How long are you holding it off? It's at least worthy of consideration, but I think Antrazi is best served here just crossing his fingers and continuing to develop his board, and that's the line he takes. And he got Nurse's Mind, so he's got a Mind and a Power Plant. He just needs a Tower now. Through the Breach is the draw here for Max. Top card is a Mountain. 
Mountain's going to enter the battlefield thanks to the Oracle. So that's land number one. Next card down is a mountain. Just a, another mismatched mountain. Perhaps from the, is that from the Finkel versus Garfield dual deck yeah, from back in the day? Maybe. Did you ever play with that? I didn't, actually. Finkel's deck was a lot better. That's weird. <laughs> that's really, <laughs> that's really strange. It was perhaps the, the most poorly balanced set of two-player decks of all time. Nice. I'm truly surprised by that. Here's a far seat. Looks like it's going to search up a stomping ground. I believe we should get a trigger here from Valakut. It was more in balance than uh, Jace versus Chandra. There are people that claim those decks are very well balanced. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Especially if you ask people in R&D, they think those decks are very well balanced. Okay. I just know that there are a lot of fire-breathing cards in the red deck already questionable, matched up against a lot of bounce spells in the blue deck. Fire-breathing versus repel. Yeah, a classic battle. Atrazi will draw. He's looking for the Tower of Power, folks. He'll start by sacrificing Chromatic Star. Draw a card. It is another Chromatic Star. I think Antrazi was really hoping to Tron up and Karn this turn. Mm -hmm. He's got some redraws, but it's not clear he can even afford one turn. Spell triggers are going to add up. Sacrificing Chromatic Star with the mana floating. Draw a card. That is a forest. No Sylvan Scrying to be cast here either for Ali. I don't think any interaction as well. He's got four Sanctum of Ugin as his land, mm -hmm. so can't even tag the Valakut here on the other side. Might not get another turn. Search tomorrow on the draw. Top card is Noth of Nyssa. So for Max, as you attack there with the Oracle, you might have some interest in maybe casting Search tomorrow for a Valakut trigger, but I think Oath of Nyssa is probably the more powerful card here. It's a lot of looks at Primeval Titan. Mm -hmm. Antrazi will draw, looking for the Tower of Power. It's a sphere. Excuse me, it's a star. Gonna play that off Sanctum Vugan. Try again. Mountain. Almost. Ooh. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that hand. Well, when Karn's ha when when Tron's hands are bad, they are bad. Converted mana cost of twenty eight. No big deal. Yeah. So now Max on top of his deck has it through the breach. So I think the question he's asking himself is, do I search for tomorrow now or do I Oath of Nissa now? Yep. If mana's not a concern, then you're probably better off shuffling away one dead card. But there's enough redraws here. It's probably worth just doing this. I think he got an Oracle. Yep. Let's see what the top card is now. It's a mountain. Ooh, you can throw the breach. That's two more points this turn. That actually is. You get him down to six, that's two triggers. Yep. Top card, mountain, yep. Backup plan. Yeah. <laughs> See if the Columbus Invitational Champion sees it. There's another land. Put you down to four. Top card, powerful one. <laughs> is it time to through the breach? Oh, the yeah. Wall? Well, I mean, it is time because it's a game winner. Oh, yeah. But does he see it? Oh, he sees it. Through the breach to the Oracle. That is going to do it. Max McFeedy is going to win this match here over Ali Antrazi, two games to one. Red Green Valaga didn't need probably Will Titan that time to take care of Green Red Tron. It used through the breach, but not for what you were expecting.